Hell's Paradise Chapter 3 Review and Recap We start off with an image of Gabi Maru recalling the past where he got to saw the Okage or the chief of the ninja village being brutally assaulted. He has daggers, knives, everything sticking out of him and he's fully injured. What's incredible about this, he's still alive and he's smiling. This leads Gabi Maru to believe that the elixir of immortality is actually real as he is basically insinuating right now that the chief does so many fantastic feats that it's near impossible. It's in the realm of the gods. So with that, we start off with a very good indication for the series that the elixir is probably real. I mean, that's the whole point of the series, so I'm expecting that. Next, we get to see a little banter between the budding lovebirds. Yes, Gabi Maru is married, but I don't know if he will actually end up with his wife. He may end up with Yagiri. Their argument is pretty dull. Yagiri's being very high strung about Gabi Maru still being bound by the hands through the entire trip as she does not want something to happen. She feels like she has to follow the rules. Also noting that she's neither ally nor enemy as Gabi Maru is attacked by Twisted Queen. Now, as Gabi Maru is being attacked, the thing that Gabi Maru points out to Yagiri is that the enemy Twisted Kion is actually unbound by the hand. So why can't Gabi Maru be as well? Sad part is Yagiri insists that Gabi Maru must stay bound through this whole fight. Then we get to meet the Yamada clan member who's escorting this criminal, Kisho. Now, Kisho is full of himself, feels like he knows everything and has no respect for Yagiri. And it seems like this is a real trend in the Yamada clan. Next up, we get to note something that's actually pretty funny which goes on between Gabi Maru and Quen. Now, the criminal Quen thinks he's all high and mighty because he's huge, he has all these weapons, and he's going to test it out on Gabi Maru. Gabi Maru is not really taking him seriously and able to dodge a lot of his incidents, but what makes it funny is that Gabi Maru finally gets serious, does two or three moves, and ends the fight instantly. Quen is unalive. Then we note that Kisho immediately beheads him and takes his head out. He basically states that for him to return, he needs to at least carry his head with him, so that can show that he didn't just abandon his mission. So in short, Kisho is going to dip and return back to the mainland. That's what he's going to do. Hopefully we don't get to see him anymore because I personally just don't like him. He rubs me the wrong way for some reason. This is my first time meeting him. Now next we get a scene where we get to see actually things are changing on the island. A lot of the criminals have it in their minds so far besides Gabi Maru that they want to eliminate the competition. So they're the only ones on the island that is able to go for the elixir of immortality. However, that's not all that's actually going on behind the scenes. We get to see some seduction trying to take place between the criminals and the Yamada clan members. Alliances being formed, which is something that is expected. You're on an island with two people. It's a criminal and an executioner on this island that has crazy things going on around. You don't know what's going to happen. Now, one of the scenes here actually takes me aback. We get to a clip where we get to see rank one Yamada member Aizen getting off a boat. Now he's escorting the giant huge criminal and all we see is the giant criminal finally get up from his relaxed position and show up behind Aizen. You can clearly see that he's going in for the kill and Aizen clearly picks it up and goes in to take out his sword and his sword breaks. You see panic in his face as the fight ends instantly and all we see is an unalived Aizen. I really predicted this was going to happen but honestly it still takes me back that I was right because he should have gone on a little further maybe or let Yagiri find his body maybe later in the story something along those lines we then get to see another's lovers quarrel but this time it's very intense as they're actually going at each other's throats fighting now Gabi Maru intends to actually eliminate Yagiri right here but what they both come to realize is that Gabi Maru is not on hollow meaning he's not empty hearted and still has emotions as a result for his love for his wife they accept his emotions as not weakness but strength and both of them come out on top of this fight realizing they both need to face their past as well as the emotions well up inside them to allow their true selves to shine through. Then we get this scene which is where it starts to pop off. We start off with a scene of Tamiya Gangetsua and Fuchi. Now Fuchi is the Yamada clan member, a short little blonde boy, while Tamiya is this massive samurai dude. They both are flabbergasted at this thing they met while they're strolling through the forest and what happens is this weird little butterfly comes and actually bites Tamiya's hand. Tamiya instantly sees the butterfly fly past him and sees a human face and it slices off his hand and then slices the butterfly in half while Fuchi is panicking trying to figure out what's going on why would you do that that's when Tamiya explains that butterfly has a face on it something is wrong here and the hand he just sliced off starts to grow plants and this is where it starts to kick off you see giant monsters creatures of all sorts and this weird fish man with a whole bunch of hands appear all over the island each one of the groups are starting to face off against these kind of creatures. I don't know how it's going to go. It's going to be an interesting fight. I don't know if these guys are human or they're hybrids or whatever it is, but they look really creepy and we're going to find out in the next episode. Overall, I would give episode 3 an 8 out of 10. It got a lot better. The story starting to go fast paced as we're getting a little bit of dialogue here and there. I expect episode 4 to be a lot of action. So let's get to that.